What's up, well that's good fam, y'all. I am so excited for this Wednesday because I have one of my good friends um, on the show today. It is Alexa Pinavega, and y'all, y'all, y'all might know who she is, but y'all about to love her even more because she's so much more than what she's known for. She is filled with so much joy, so much love, and more than that, just a fruit of who God is. And I'm grateful to have a conversation with her. Her and Carlos actually have a new book coming out called "What If Love Is the Point: Living for Jesus in a self-consumed world don't we need it bring it on <laughs> alexa i'm so excited to have you on the podcast baby thank you for having one half of the book here yes <laughs> thank hey you. that's great that's great i'm sure you'll I cover know. all the grounds I'm going to do my best. I will I will try to answer some Carla's questions too, if possible. <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, we'll just have a conversation. And look, if people want to hear Carla's side, they can read the book, right? And the That's book. Right. That's right. The book is amazing. Like I was telling you before we popped on, like one of my friends just got finished reading it and she had notes and notes and just was so encouraged and inspired and was like, Sadie, this conversation so awesome. I'm so excited about, which was just cool. So look, I I heard before we started this that you haven't been prepped at all for the Whoa That's Good podcast question. So for, yes. all, for all the listeners who know what's coming, I'm putting you in the hot seat to ask you the first question I ask everyone. What is the okay. best piece of advice you've ever been given boom oh best piece of advice I've ever been given um you know it's actually funny and and I've been hearing it more so now than than before but um somebody told me to not be afraid to slow down Hmm. and this was years ago years and years ago like you know like I think earlier on in my career must have been like 12 or 13 Hmm. um during like spy kids and it was Mm. crazy and they actually gave the advice to my mom not to me but obviously I took that for me to not be afraid to slow down um and that's actually stuck with me especially in a time where everything is like hustle 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 hurry 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 um the culture that we live in really caters towards like Mm. give up your life and and like work hard every day because that's what it's about when really I feel like you know the miracle's of Jesus happened in the time when he was interrupted and when he was like Mm. slowing down, he wasn't like, Hey, I have to hurry up and get to this next place. So everybody leave me alone. Like he, it was in the interruption where so many beautiful miracles happened for him. So for me that like not being afraid to slow down, even in our busy, busy season, sometimes it's literally just taking like five minutes before a podcast or five minutes before to set just going like all right god reset me i know it's a busy yeah. busy time i want to slow down and just sit with you even if it's only the two minutes that i have for today to sit That's with great. you so i guess don't be afraid to slow down it's so good i love that way to just show up on the spot and drop some <laughs> truth that you heard when you were 12 <laughs> that's so good Okay, so for many people listening, they saw you and they knew who you were. But for some people, they're like, wait, Spy Kids? This is my whole childhood. Like, this is who we're talking to. And how cool that not only were you on Spy Kids, but here you are years later and you're speaking truth into people's life. And I just, I love that, that you've grown up with so many of us uh, my age and around our age. And I just think that that is um, awesome. There is a part in the book that you talk about what you remember from your Spy Kids audition. And I just love this because I think that so often we idolize celebrities but celebrities are so human and your thoughts in that moment were like so your age and I just love it so talk to me about that time in your life what you're going for and and the memory that really stood out to you yes okay so when I auditioned for Spy Kids I walked into the room and now please know that usually when you're walking into an audition room it's full of a bunch of old people especially if you're a kid anybody (laughs) older than 30 is an old person okay so I'm 11 years old and I'm walking to this audition room and this there's this director holding a guitar with a like a cool bandana on and I remember just looking at him being like you look really cool you don't look like a director at all (laughs) and luckily he thought that was really funny instead of an insult Um, that's awesome uh, yeah, that was like, that was what I remembered most was that he was like such a cool dude. And then awesome. um, obviously like, when you go and you work on sets like that, I mean, it was playing dress up every day. It was a very yeah. unique, special experience that, um, I don't know, I, I feel like sets are so different now because of mm-hmm. like social media and expectations with kids. And, you know, when I was little, we didn't have cell phones, like we didn't mm-hmm. have social media. 
whenever we were on set, we weren't on our phones between takes. We were playing together. Um, we were awesome. playing football. They hired a fun coordinator awesome. on set. So we were no just way. like playing. Yeah, it was amazing. Oh my gosh. If I did not do what I'm, you know how people always say like, if you didn't do what you do, what would you do? I would be a fun coordinator. That sounds like the best job ever. I didn't know that, that was a job that existed. Can you imagine? Like, yes, I'm a fun coordinator for a living. Like, that's what I do. That's incredible. Okay, so I love it. So you're so human in this moment, and you, and as you are now, and then you get this role that obviously kind of changes a, probably the trajectory of your life. That's a huge role, and you've continued to do acting in, in such sense. But besides what people obviously saw from your childhood, what was your childhood like? Like, didn't you like grow up on a farm? You had this supermodel yeah. mom. Like, like, tell us a little bit about the backstory. Okay, so the backstory of where I came from. Um, my mom was a supermodel, but she she watched other families, and she didn't like that these parents would leave their kids. So she actually traveled everywhere with her children. Mm. Um, so we would be at these big photo shoots with her as little little kids. And she went on a photo shoot in California, um, and her closest friend, which is my godmother, was watching me at the time and took me to an audition. Wow. While we were in LA, and I ended up getting the job, wow. which is a very rare, rare thing. I mean, kind of how it all came about was just very wild. But honestly, like God had his hand in it from day one. Um, and you can just how everything unfolded from from mm. opportunity to opportunity. Um, it was really like such a God thing. But, so but cool. yeah, uh, we were living on a ranch at the time in Florida. And I would feed the horses. That was my job. So they would literally wow. leave the four wheeler in second gear. There was like horse feed on the back <laughs> of, of the big four wheeler. And I'd drive around the ranch feeding horses. <laughs> awesome. That's so awesome. And yeah, I know that. See, that's the thing. Like people, people see the Hollywood, but they don't see the girl and the ranch in Florida with the second gear. Uh, for I know, her. right? And I just love how, I, I just, I love that. I love that, you know, our life can look like so many different things and so many different seasons of it. And it doesn't matter if you're in Florida on the ranch or if you're in Hollywood, it's the same person through and through. And I think that's just like a good thing to recognize in life. Um, I feel like we had about this before, like with, with social media and like for us, you know, one of my favorite verses is um, all run in a race, all runners run, but only one gets the prize. Run in such a way as to get the prize. And for me, that mm. means like walk the walk, like the prize is the kingdom. You really have to walk the walk. So when we look at social mm. media today, like our goal is to really show what walking the walk looks like. Like you don't have to mention Jesus. You just have to show what living for Jesus actually looks like. And more often That's than great. not, like that represents him more than like screaming Jesus to the top of your lungs. When I sleep well, I feel like I can conquer the world. We all know, though, that one restless night can totally throw you off. When Christian and I got married, it was time to invest in a better mattress. And so when we were ready to hit the shops, we knew Helix Sleep was actually the right choice to do so we could just make it easy. Because taking their two-minute quiz together allowed us to both have our input on our personal preferences. And Helix recognizes that everyone's sleeping needs are personal, so that the mattress should also be personal. They have soft, medium, and firm mattresses, even mattresses that can help cool you if you get hot when you sleep or support spinal alignment yes please and thank you christian especially loves the cooling effect because he gets really hot at night when we took the quiz i was matched with a helix midnight mattress because i wanted a mattress that was not too soft and not too firm i'm also a side sleeper and i feel so good waking up now with no aches and pains and no more sleepless nights due to tossing and turning it's been such a huge improvement our mattress is still soft but it also is supportive plus it's good for me christian cabo and honey because let's be real we all open that bed most of the time if you're on the hunt for a new mattress don't wait a second longer take the quiz now and the helix mattress comes right to your door ship for free with no awkward mattress store shopping needed in fact you don't even need to take my word for it helix was awarded number one best overall mattress of 2020 by various magazines and they have over 12,000 5 five-star reviews it has even been recommended by multiple leading chiropractors and doctors of sleep medicine as a go-to solution for improved sleep all you have to do is go to helixsleep.com sadie take their two 
two minute quiz and they're gonna match you with the best customized mattress option for you. So get ready for the best sleep of your life. They even have a trial period for 100 nights risk free. This is the best part. If for some reason you don't love it, they'll actually come pick it up for you. So it's completely risk free, but I truly think you're gonna love it. Right now Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash Sadie. That's helixsleep.com slash Sadie for up to $200 off and two free pillows. That's right. That's so good. It's so cool that you brought that up because I was just about to say that. That's literally where I was going was, you know, a lot of people don't know that we have become friends. And part of that's from us both being on Dance with the Stars, us both having the same partner, which I want to talk about in a second. But one cool thing was I watched you and Carlos do such a good job with parenting your kids in such a way that you were, you know, showing them on social media and inviting them into your life, traveling with them, um, just showing how, like, I guess you can be a parent. It doesn't have to completely change your whole entire life and whatnot. And when Christian and I became a family, I was getting a little bit nervous because everyone's like, well, how are you going to do what you do now? Are you still going to travel? Uh, You know, are you going to show, honey? Are you not? You know, so many celebrities keep their kids private. And I was like, who do I ask these questions to? Like, you know, who's done this? And I thought about you and I texted you and I was like, look, I'm, I'm nervous. I mean, to be honest, I texted you because I was really afraid. One, I was nervous about just the change. And then two, I was really just nervous because I was, I was kind of afraid to like show honey to the world because, you know, this is like your perfect little gift and you know how the world can be. The world can be evil. The world can be mean. The world can be hateful and the world can just be Mm -hmm. scary. And I was like, how do you, How did you get to the point where you decided to share your family? And your advice to me was like so pivotal. And you were like, and you can share a little bit about this because I'm sure this bleeds into everything you do. But you were like, look, we are to set the example of what a loving Christian family looks like. And if they're not going to show that on all the other media platforms, like you have the opportunity to do that on your media platform. And I was like, wow, like that's so true. If, if TV is not going to show that example and I'm frustrated by that, if movies aren't going to show that example, I'm frustrated by that. But yet here I have a platform with millions of people that are following me where I can show what a loving family looks like who love God, love each other, love their kids and their life doesn't become this sad story when they have kids. It actually starts this amazing journey like how cool to set that tone and honestly from you saying that I I walked in it with peace I didn't walk in it with fear like I share honey with the world and our little family and I have seen it was so cool I had this moment And I was um, at the beach, actually, on vacation. And this girl walks up to me. She had just had a baby. She was like, you have inspired me so much in motherhood, how to, like, be a Christian mom and, like, love my husband better. And she gave me this, like, just the most incredible affirmation. And I literally thought about what you said. I'm like, had you not spoken that over my life, I don't know that I would have done it. And now look at the people who have been impacted by the words that you said. And so I'm just so thankful. They, I'm so thankful for that. And so talk to me a little bit about that. Like you and Carlos is like specific call that y'all feel as y'all are, you know, in Hollywood and, and doing the whole celebrity thing, but also fully devout Christians. You know, I think, well, one, thank you for that encouragement because hearing like the seeds of just you give me giving you my opinion on something was is awesome because that's very encouraging for me. Um, I think for us, it's like you said, if we're not going to see these examples on television shows or in movies, where are we going to learn it? Um, Because right Mm -hmm. now there isn't anything set up to really glorify a beautiful family. I mean, a lot of that's getting stripped away very, very quickly in every area, whether it's uh, in the media, whether it's um, on movies or TV. It's just the idea of family is really broken. Um, And there is, it's interesting because I get a lot of people who are not Christian writing me and just being like, man, I don't know why, but I really like your family. And I don't, I don't believe the God that, Mm -hmm. that you guys believe in, but it's very interesting the way that you talk about your faith. Mm -hmm. So like, I'm just, I'm very curious. And it's funny to get those messages because obviously we know that, that, that it's his light, right? Like his light, like coming through in what we do is what's actually causing these people to come back and go, wait, why do I like this family? Well, it's yeah. because of Jesus. I know you, I know you right. don't think it's because of Jesus, but that's why. Um, and I think 
we don't realize how many times we're actually planting seeds daily, whether it's whether you are somebody who is who has a platform or if you're somebody who's just grocery shopping, um, like how you treat people, how you treat your kids in public, how you how you love on them or yeah. like listen to them at the grocery store. Like I know it's easy when yeah. you have like for instance, I take all three of my kids to grocery shop and it can be insane, like absolutely insane. But we figured out we make it work. <laughs> And it's actually really fun because I've found other people going, oh my gosh, there's a mom all by herself with three kids in the store and it could Mm -hmm. be chaotic, but it isn't. It's actually like a very Mm -hmm. peaceful situation. And I found that like even that in itself has been encouraging for other people. So I don't know. I think all of this is to say is like we have an important job as Christian families to step out and walk like Jesus did and like really lead by example without even having to say anything. That's great. That's so good. I love that. Um, I was going to talk to you about um, Dancing with the Stars because one thing that you and Carlos did was y'all actually competed against each other, which honestly, I have no idea how you did that because it's already hard as it is. But I want to ask you about that just outside of Dancing with the Stars. I feel like that's a picture of what could be life because y'all both, you know, are in the television world. You're both doing big careers and all that stuff. And there's this, like, um, temptation in relationships to compete against one another and not champion one another. And so what's that journey kind of been like for you and Carlos to learn, like, okay, we are not each other's competition. We are each other's cheerleaders. Okay, so I will say this. I did not know my husband was competitive until Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> prior, to that, prior to that, he was not competitive. Uh, but then after that, like, we really, we, all, if we could work on every project together, we would. That is our dream goal, like, mm-hmm. to create a show or something where we can just work together again and again. Because we make a great team. Like, we're a great we're like a great married mm-hmm. couple. We're great parents. We're great partners when it comes to That's working awesome. together. Like God, God built us in a, in an awesome way. Um, with, as far as like work goes, we've never been competitive in that way at That's all. Awesome. Like I love seeing him shine. I am his biggest cheerleader, That's awesome. and I know he's my biggest cheerleader. I mean, there's so many times where I definitely become fearful or I get embarrassed or too shy and he's like babe do you know who you are come on you are like <laughs> the awesome. daughter of the most high king like he's so encouraging you know um but I will say during Dancing with the Stars he he was very competitive <laughs> <laughs> hey it'll bring it out of you what you don't know is there will come out like, what the heck he didn't want it wasn't about like he wanted me out of the competition he just wanted to do better than I did that's hilarious. That that would be me and Christian would not be good for that. We would not be good for dancing no. with the stars together. All your dancing reels, Look. those are adorable. Stop. Oh my gosh. Listen, I don't care if Christian does not have like um I don't know what you would call it, like rhythm at all, but he would be so competitive no matter what we were doing. Like <laughs> he cannot clap to the beat of any song, but that boy would compete if he was on Dance with the Stars. <laughs> they'd love that kind of heart you know they would (laughs) they do they would well I love how we've talked about like so many of the wins like you know Spy Kids and Dance with the Stars and you and Carlos being such a great couple but what I love about your book is you talk about the hard stuff and that is something Mm -hmm. that Hollywood does not always show the hard side of things they always show the good side of things and the filtered side of things and that's not Hollywood that's social media that's the world that's just the temptation of wanting to show people the perspective perspective that you want them to see but the reality is there's a lot more to your story you know you talk very openly about eating disorders which I walk through myself as I know so many women have Um, you talk about your divorce you talk about these hard moments and I'm just so thankful you didn't shy away from those things because those are the things that so many people can relate to and I think it makes the aspect of faith in your life and and all the blessing in your life that much more um, hopeful for people who are listening because they're not like they're like oh I don't have to have a perfect life to have that Jesus she's talking about actually can go through the mm-hmm. hardship and go through the struggle and that's where he is so talk to me about some of that um that part of your testimony like when you're walking through the eating disorder what did that look like and how did god 
bring you out at that time of your life because one of the number one things we get asked um, in our DMs and stuff is about eating disorders because uh, our audience is primarily like 18 to 25 year olds, a lot of girls going through college and I know that's a time where a lot of people struggle the most with those types of things. I don't know about y'all, but our summer is filling up quick. Family vacations, speaking events, and getting ready for our LO conference in August are all on the schedule, and I'm so pumped. But I'm also looking ahead at how we can keep our energy and boost a healthy immune system. I know I need a fuel right with all these things, but I don't want anything that's going to make me crash later or sacrifice overall health. With everything going on, I know we're going to need our Athletic Greens. I love to share about AG1 by Athletic Greens because it is a one drink with everything you need in. It. No more searching for trying to combine multiple vitamins. Just in one simple scoop, you can be sure that you're fueling your body with all that you need. One scoop of AG1 contains 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food source ingredients. It includes a multivitamin, multimineral, probiotic, green superfood blend, and a more in one convenient serving. Christian was skeptical for the same reason you are, but it actually does taste good. We've gotten more family members hooked as well because it fills the nutritional gap, supports energy and focus, and helps with gut health and digestion. Plus, it's super lifestyle friendly, so whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free, free, AG1 covers all of these. It contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals or artificial anything, and still manages to taste great. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you an immune-supporting free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase if you visit athleticgreens.com slash woe today. Again, simply visit athleticgreens.com slash woe to take control of your health and give AG1 a try. Oh yeah. So for me, my biggest fear was that anybody would find out that I had an eating disorder. Um, because mm. in my head, I'm, I'm like, I'm still me. I still have my personality. I still have my heart, but I was living with this secret that I was really, really ashamed of. Um, and it, I learned it from, you know, I was being praised whenever I looked skinnier. And mm. if I didn't look as skinny one day, um, nobody would compliment me or nobody would talk about yeah. how beautiful I was and anything like that. So I like, I really started thriving on what other people thought of me instead of focusing in on God. But I was also in a very different season in my life where I wanted a relationship with God, but I didn't really have, I definitely didn't have what I have now. Mm -hmm. um, but the biggest lie that I learned at the time was that if people found out it would be the end of me. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that was the stronghold that the eating disorder had over me. So if anybody listening right now has an eating disorder, please tell someone, even if it's one person, mm. tell a sibling, tell a friend. Um, if you mm. don't want to know any of these people, you can find someone online that like nobody has to know about that you can like talk to there because that's the, the stronghold was that if anybody found out about my eating disorder, I was done. But the second mm. I started talking about it and telling people I was like breaking off all those chains and then it just wow. became this thing that no longer consumed me. Like obviously I like God did a whole number in my life to get me through the eating disorder. But but the big thing for me was even when I got through it, I was still so afraid to talk about it because I right. didn't want people to look at me and go, Oh, she had an eating disorder. Exactly. And yeah. I do talk I, I talk about that in the book. Um um I have like an interesting family dynamic and and we've we've all gone through um a really hard time as a family but we've also been doing a lot of healing and we're definitely on the up which is fantastic um but there was a time when I was younger and my mom said it out of truly she meant it to protect me um but it did it did hurt me at the time um do you remember Catherine McPhee when she came out uh -huh. um saying that she was bulimic and it was like on uh -huh. the cover of like all these magazines at the time. And it was something simple, but like my mom just said to me, you know, now people are only going to see her as being a bulimic. So like, don't ever let anybody know that like hmm. you're dealing with this. And she, I know yeah. like she meant it in like a way of protecting me, but I really feel yeah. like the enemy took those words and just turned it into something that had a stronghold over my life. So like, right. I just lived with this secret and it just tormented me for so wow. long. And I, and I think I also probably could have solved this much faster had I confided in the right people earlier on. Wow, absolutely. Community is definitely everything for those things and the enemy. Yeah. 
will use any words, any person to yeah. make you think like, to, to say something, like you said, like, she could have not been meaning that that way at all. It could have been for protection, but no. the way the enemy can twist and distort right. and manipulate can make exactly. you feel like, oh, well, then I can't tell anybody because if I told right. somebody, then dot, dot, dot. And I love how you include in the book that I think at like 14, you were voted Vanity Fair's like hottest teen, one of the hottest teen or the 14 hottest teens, whatever it was, yes. and, which is – Honestly, first of all, so cool, just a small flex moment, but what you said about it was even cooler was that, you know, you would think that that would bring you self-esteem and you would think that would bring confidence, but in fact, it did the opposite. And I actually experienced the same thing in a different way because when I was struggling the most with my weight and just distorted eating and distorted mindset when it came to food, um, I was like modeling literally in New York Fashion Week. And when I look back at that, people are like, well, how could you think that you were dot, dot, dot because you were in Fashion Week? But I was like, that actually made it worse, not that it wasn't the people's fault for that. It was just where my no. view was or my perspective was. And just like you said, like even by people saying like you look skinny or even by people, it was just feeding the insecurity that I had and it was actually mm -hmm. making me um, almost strive for perfection even more. That was absolutely impossible to obtain because it was a false image I had in my head. Um, and at the time, like my image of myself was so distorted. The way I viewed myself um was so different now that I look back at pictures and see myself I'm like what in the world it was like the enemy like distorted my vision even and so I think oh, yeah. a lot of girls think if I was voted the hottest girl in Vanity Fair if I was walking New York Fashion Week then I would know that I was beautiful then I would never struggle with eating disorder talk to me a little bit about how that's not where truth and confidence is found well, I think it's, I think it's hard, really, really hard, especially for girls nowadays, because I mean, look at we, every photo that we post, we're like, how many people liked it? Like, I hope like, yeah, like yeah. I know even, even, you know, my younger siblings, they're, I'm the oldest of seven. There's like seven of us. Well, I have a half sister who's older than I am, but there's seven of us. Um, and I can see my younger siblings who are in a very different generation. One is 13, one is 16. Um, the other one's like 21. And they get really sad when they don't get a lot of likes on a photo. And I forget that like, we've come through it. We're older now. So we're like, it doesn't matter. But for them, it really matters. And I have to put myself because they're in a very different situation than how I grew up. I had enough insecurities that were very frustrating to deal with this new generation. It's very, it's a hard mental thing for right. young kids to deal with because it is a form of rejection. And I think that's where you really have to lean on God's word. And honestly, right. that's what got me through my eating disorder. I yeah. had this faith my whole entire life. Like my mom planted that seed when I was a kid, but we stopped going to church when I was 13, but I craved that relationship with God. And I knew it was deeper than what I had. And I, and I wanted to know more. So mm -hmm. when I turned 16, I started going to church on my own and really kind of going like, God, who are you? And I would talk about God. I'd talk about Jesus, but then Holy Spirit was this weird thing that I didn't quite understand. Mm -hmm. So I just didn't even talk about Holy Spirit. That was kind of like pushed aside. <laughs> that was kind of like right? me too. Yeah. You're like, I <laughs> don't understand I that. <laughs> I don't get it. That's weird. Right. Yeah. But then as you get older and like, as, as I started really reading the word and understanding who God was and developing that relationship with him, I started I started figuring out like what the armor of God really stood for. So mm, like awesome. you have your, your shield of faith, um, you know, belt of truth, you know, all the, all the armor. But what I was missing was my sword, which mm. is the word of God. So I, I had all this faith to like battle my eating disorder, but I didn't have a sword to kill it because I wasn't in the word the way um, when I was younger, the way I was when I was older. So for me, like any advice for people, regardless of like eating disorder or frustration on like confidence or the way you look, the word of God is power. Yeah. Like it is so powerful. I mean, it it's so powerful in, in the way that, you know, like people look at like superheroes or, or magic or whatever they want to look at. It is literally that. I feel like like a superhero because I know I have God yeah. behind me and everything that I do, I kind of feel yeah. untouchable. I know I'm not, not me. It's not by my own doing, yeah. but but he's in control. So I literally yeah. have nothing to fear because he's in control. It's like a wild, beautiful that. revelation when you discover that. <laughs> it's freedom. 
My Tupava is one of my favorite people on the planet, and who am I kidding? Tupava is everyone's favorite person if you know him. To know him is to love him. One day he was telling me a story, and I realized how many stories of his that I just didn't know, because how could I? He's lived for a lot longer than me. Then I discovered StoryWorth, and I was so excited to give this to him as a gift. Truthfully, it's actually been the gift that keeps on giving to me. Through StoryWorth, I've gotten to see so many old pictures that I'd never seen of him before, stories from elementary years I've never heard, and one of my favorite details he included was about the things he would want to say one day to his great grandkids and I actually have his great grandkid honey so that was really special. If you've never heard of it StoryWorth is an online service that helps you connect with your favorite people through the best memories and stories. It's super easy. Every week StoryWorth would send two pop questions in an email to help prompt his favorite memories and it could be anything from what's your favorite childhood memory to one of my personal favorites, as you know, what's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? Because no matter how well you know someone, sometimes you just don't know the right questions to ask. And that's where StoryWorth has you covered. It's a really cool thing that you can just keep learning and growing in those intentional questions with the people that you love. And after one year, StoryWorth puts all those questions and stories, including photos, into a beautiful keepsake book that the whole family can enjoy and keep forever. I uh, honestly love it, but it makes me a little emotional that one day I'll get to share that with Honey. And this is really cool too. So Two Papa was actually in the publishing world for a long time and he was very impressed with how quality the book actually was when they sent it to him. So that was really exciting. I'm telling you, you're going to love it. You get to know your loved ones even better and preserve their special memories with StoryWorth. And right now there's a deal for you for a limited time. You can save $10 on your first purchase when you go to storyworth.com slash woe. That's story, S-T-O-R-Y, worth W-O-R-T-H dot com slash woe to save $10 off on your first purchase. Storyworth dot com slash woe. I love that. And I love how there's this moment where you're like the Holy Spirit, it's not weird. Like he's your friend. Like he is oh. like how Jesus said, there is something coming. There is someone coming who's greater because he's going to walk yep. with you. He's going to be in you. And so, yep. man, when you accept that, then life just, it does feel untouchable. There's this moment. I love how you compared it to superhero. There's this moment in the movie Wonder Woman that I was like, yes and amen. I was like, that is it. It's She's actually, it's right before she has like her full Wonder Woman costume on and she's about to just go for it. And they're about to cross this like super dangerous, part of like the war basically um the, everybody else is saying no we have to go around it we're not going to help these people this is too far gone this is too bad and they and then the guy goes this is not what we're here to do and wonder woman looks at him and he goes she goes but it's what i'm gonna do and in that moment right after she said right. it's what i'm gonna do she like reveals her like suit and this whole stuff and she has a shield and she has a sword Come on, shield of faith, sword of the spirit. And there's like all these like arrows and bullets coming at her and she's defending all of them with her shield. And then she has her sword that has the power. And I'm like, this is literally the picture of what it looks like to walk with the armor of God. It's like you can get to go to the places that seem dangerous and that seem like they're gonna take you out and that seem like there's no way that you can go through that no one else wants to go to and you say, I actually can walk in this space because one, I have the shield of faith that's going to defend me from the arrows and the things that the enemy's throwing at me, but two, I have the sword of the spirit that can actually take out anything that's coming yeah. at me in the name of Jesus. And and like when I yeah. saw that, I'm like, man, I want to bring that same energy into the things that the enemy's trying to take me out with, whether it be eating disorder, whether it be anxiety attacks, whether it be depression or anger, whatever the thing is you struggle with. And so I just, when you were saying all that, I was like, Yes, God gave me the same image. And it's what God gave Paul in Ephesians 6 when he wrote what the armor of God was. And oh uh, gosh, it's just so good, Alexa. I love it. Um, I love that. I have to watch that movie now. Go watch it again. Everyone go it. watch it again with the perspective of the gospel. I mean, even there's a part at the end where she, she – like the last thing she says, and it is so spiritual. And I wrote it down and we actually had it in our office, like the quote for a while, because it was like so truth filled. It was, it was crazy. It was crazy. You got to go watch it with a biblical perspective. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch it. I was such a dork after it. I literally like watched the movie, was so moved. I like read the script online. <laughs> I'm not really? even an actor. So I'm sitting there reading the script. 
Do you think the writers were Christian? I, like, I, do you think it was like I model? looked it up. Look, I looked it up. I didn't find anything on that, but I was convinced that they were because it was so spiritual. Like at the end, mm-hmm. she talks about how there will always be light and there's dark and no nobody can really save you from that. At the end of the day, it's a choice. What are you going to believe? And then it says, um, wow. but we don't, we don't give up on the light of the dark. We stay and we fight for the world that we know it can be. Like, I mean, there is so many lines that were just like drop the mic moments. She talks about love. She talks about true light, darkness. I was like, this is like the Bible. That sounds, it's that crazy. sounds pretty Christian to me, though. I mean. Sounds pretty Christian to me. Hey, well, if they took any inspiration from the Bible, that's just really cool to know that it created an incredible movie based off of the idea of what God created. Well, the whole thing and I've been thinking about this lately, this is totally going off topic, but it's just so interesting that like so many movies that are like the number one movies, it's like adventure movies or superhero movies. And it's all about good versus evil. It's light versus darkness. It's all this stuff. And really that's the idea of the Bible too. It's like since the beginning, God created light and he separated the light and the dark, right? And then, you know, towards the end of, like, Revelation, there's so much darkness, but then, like, God is the light of the world. And then in the middle Mm -hmm. of the Bible, there's, like, this moment where God tells us what our job is to be, and it's to be the light in the midst of the darkness. So there's always a separation of good and evil. There's always a separation of light and darkness, and you're called to be the light. And so when you're watching Mm -hmm. these superhero movies, and you're so captivated by the story, and you always want light to win, and you always want the, the good guy to win, it's like, well, this is like the whole setup of how God, God moves. And because God's God already instilled is, you know? that in our hearts. Like God instilled that in yes. our hearts, like before we were born, you know? Uh, so it's funny yes. how we naturally come out like that. We want to watch movies like that. We want to see redemption stories. We want, we want all this stuff because God instilled that in us. And it's so funny so to me when, when, when people are like seeking all of these higher powers and things, and I'm like, you're naturally seeking God. Like, that's what you want. I know it's hard for people to want to give themselves over to God, but it does kind of make me go like, oh, when people are searching for higher powers, but they keep avoiding Mm -hmm. God. I'm like, what are you doing? (laughs) It's because he's created that desire in your heart. So true. I I, I read a quote in your book that was almost identical to what you just said, and I thought it was so good that we've been created with this um, natural just desire and longing for God, you know? And when you come to the revelation, like you said of, wow, that God is for me, not against me, that God is, is with me and and ready and available. The moment I turn to him, like your whole life changes. Um, one thing that was a theme in y'all's book is that yes, y'all are pursuing the Lord, but God is like pursuing y'all. And that's for all of us that we pursue the Lord, but the Lord pursues us. And There is a moment where you talk about um, giving someone like $800 and the story turns out so cool. And I wanted you to talk about that because so many people have such a hard time believing God because they can't see him. But it's almost like it's not that you can physically see God or you can audibly hear God. But the things that God does, you can't miss. And the things that he says when he speaks in conviction, you cannot you can't not hear. And so talk to me about that moment and just some moments where it's like this God who you can't see is someone that you also can't miss. Well, I feel like that really comes down to like Holy Spirit living inside you. And that was something that I just couldn't understand early on. But like God was always using Holy Spirit to guide me and to like push me to do things that I couldn't quite understand that it was really God's guidance, right? Mm -hmm. Um, In this particular moment that you're talking about, um, I've never, I've never had, I've never worried about money. I've never cared about money. It's not something, it's not because I grew up super wealthy. Actually, there were times that, and I didn't even talk about this in the book, but there were times where we were living in our car um, because Mm -hmm. we had an interesting family situation. And there were times where we had like, cars and houses repossessed, like crazy stuff happens in our lives. And maybe that'll be a a story for a future book. Um, But I've never cared about money because I knew that God was always going to provide as long as I walked in a way that honored him and honored his children. Hmm. Um, So for me, 
I've really lived by faith in that way. Obviously, you want to exercise wisdom as well. You don't want to live carelessly like, Mm -hmm. oh, God's going to honor me. So I'm just going to like do whatever. But (laughs) really really listening to him and, and, and I knew this woman needed needed the eight hundred dollars and she needed it more than I did and I just knew like God has me covered. I don't have mm-hmm. to worry. So so I wrote her a check and I literally had five dollars left in my account because I only had eight hundred and five dollars. Wow. And um yeah and then the next week I ended up booking a huge film that like more than covered wow. <laughs> our bills and my family and we were we were very we were very honored in that moment but it was just such a beautiful testimony because at the time Carlos was not that guy he was a guy who any money he had any belonging he had those were his things he earned them and he was not giving them up um not to say that Carlos would never give but he didn't understand that kind of giving like Christian giving, like where this all belongs to God anyways right 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 um and it was really cool to be able to like give this lady this check and then him witness a week later the abundant blessing. Like you don't do it for the blessing, but he was like, holy cannoli, God, like That's more awesome. than honored what you just did. So so that was cool because he was still a baby in his faith yeah. at that time because it was oh, very early so on good. in the relationship. That's so cool. I mean, it's so cool. It's not that you expect the gift because God, God's given you enough no. that is he, if he doesn't give it back financially or if he doesn't give it back in uh, a job or position, then, then he's not enough. But there are those yeah. moments where, where he does do that and just the kindness of him to come down in those intentional ways and, and it be a dollar sign or it be a, a friend that comes into your life or it be a relationship. Yes. It's like the coolest thing. And I had a mentor once say, uh, I don't know if you know Shelly Giglio very well, but she's incredible. And she said, I dare you to try to outgive God. And I was like, okay. And it was it's so crazy. Out. It was so crazy. Like I was like, okay. And like there were these right after that a few moments where I felt like so strongly in the Lord to like give this person this amount of money and um I, it's hard it's, it's easier whenever you're single to do that because you're like okay you know but yeah. when you're married it's like hard because then it's like you both have to be on the same page as that and it's y'all's yeah. money I just remember going to Christian and being like I just really feel like the Lord has told me to do this and I want you to pray about it because I want it to be a a us thing and he was like absolutely 100 percent. let's do it so we did and literally i'm not kidding we sat on that for a couple of months because we felt like we needed to do it in person and we didn't live in the same place so finally we get to the place she is we give her the money and 20 minutes later i got a text and it was like the most random thing ever and basically it was an a deal that I was going to be able to make that was like that and more and it was like the craziest thing ever because it literally we said we knew God said do it we knew we were going to do it in person and the minute we gave it to her 20 minutes later it was like that and like I said yeah that doesn't always happen there's been other times where we've no. given and <laughs> nothing and that's fine because like I said God's grace is enough what Don't God's do already done that. on the cross right. is enough absolutely but there have been moments where it's like we know that we know we need to do something and it's like God just honors you in that moment to say like you did it you know like well done yeah. and um it's just so cool I love it last thing I want to ask you about is your friend Andrew you and Carlos mutual friend Andrew because I just love how earlier in the episode you were talking about people that plant the seed and right. there's people that plant the seed in our life that, and you always underestimate the seed planter because you don't always, you know, they're, they're the person you don't always see. You know, they're not the person right. uh, on the cover of the book, of course. It's just like in Moses' right. life, everybody talks about Moses, nobody talks about Aaron, but like Aaron is the only reason Moses had the courage to get up and right. go back because Aaron spoke yes. for him. There's always like a, there's a partner in this. And what it seems like Andrew did in y'all's life, getting out to the place it was, was just amazing. And so talk to the people out there who you know are underestimating the power of being the person that plants the seed yes andrew man i have so much to say about him well first off we always laugh because we're like he's the third wheel (laughs) but he's not the third (laughs) wheel he happens to be he happens to be the person that like god really not just planted in our lives but planted in so many people's lives to really 
show them what living for Jesus looks like. Um, he carries and walks in God's peace. It does not matter what he's going through. And he's been through some crazy circumstances. Um, a little background on Andrew is that he is a refugee from Afghanistan. Um, he was mm. three years old, being shot at, like running for his life with his mm. family, um, ended up escaping to Germany and then making it to the United States. Um, actually attempted suicide twice. He grew up Muslim mm. and um, uh, attempted suicide, I believe, at the age of 19. And then again in his 20s and then discovered Jesus when he was 28. And he wow. was like completely freed at 28 um, and didn't even wow. understand what that meant for him. But from then on, he's like, I don't care. Like, I love you. You've given me freedom. I'm giving my life to you. And he really wow. did. I mean, Andrew welcomes homeless people into his home. He will pull them from Come under on. a bridge and like give them a house wow. to live in. He feeds them. He clothes them. If somebody's like, I really love your watch. That That's so cool. He's like, here, have it. We're just like, you can't just take everything off and give it to people. And wow. he's like, why not? It's not mine anyways. It's all God's. Wow. So we've just learned like um, complete peace. We've learned complete um like just loving on God's children and what it means to really live for God through Andrew. And he has just been our biggest encourager and cheerleader since then. I mean, he's our, he's our closest Mm -hmm. friend. I don't, I don't know what else to say about Andrew other than he's like the third person in, in our, our walk. And and it's amazing. It's awesome. I just love that. I loved in the book, how Carlos called Andrew and this, particular moment and Andrew helped lead him to Jesus in a way and has invited him in in these moments and like you said community is so important and if there's one person in your life that you're inspired by that you look up to that knows a little bit more than you do call that person reach out to that person message that person have a coffee with that person don't feel weird about it I mean Carlos, Carlos, literally, he was not a Christian guy. Like he knew God. Yeah, yeah, sure. Like got this God thing. Like I'm sure he's real, but like never pursued him. Um, and when mm-hmm. he saw Andrew walking through peace in any and all relationships, mm-hmm. uh, Carlos finally called him. He's like, why are you so happy all the time? Mm-hmm. And Andrew's like, what? He's like, why, why are you so like peaceful and happy all the time? And Andrew goes, Jesus. And Carlos like, you're crazy. There's no way. It's not <laughs> Jesus. So Carlos hung up wow. and then he called him back wow. a couple hours later was like okay really is it Jesus and Andrew's like come to church with me on Sunday and I'll I'll show you like why I have peace Carlos showed up to church and literally like that pastor spoke exactly what Carlos was going through in his life that Sunday and Los was like I'm in I'm in and then I met him I met him the Thursday after that Sunday. Oh my gosh, come on. <laughs> See, that's yes. amazing. And that's what I mean by seed planter. Like you don't have to be the pastor in that scenario. You don't have to be nope. the Carlos in that scenario. You don't have to be the worship leader. You can be the Andrew, the one who's living yep. a life for Jesus, who's Plant who's seed. living in the fruit of who he is, peace, love, joy, all the things. And someone calls you and says, what's this about? And that's when you say Jesus. And it's just so awesome. Yep. Well, Alexa, you're a huge inspiration. You and Carlos set the tone so well for how to just stay firm in your faith, but also go out and do all the things to be in the world, but not of the world. And I just Amen. appreciate your influence so much. And thanks for living, living the life for Jesus and sharing with us all about it. Um, I love you, friend. Baby, I love you. Thank you so much. One, for having me, and two, for just always being a great encourager to us and to everybody who listens to you because, man, the Lord wants that and He honors that so much. Oh, thank you so much. Well, have a great day on set. Go crush thank whatever you. you're doing. We love you so much. <laughs> thank you. Mom, awesome. Love you. Alexa, thanks for making it work. Thank you. Thank you.